So now it was kind of like a back to the future moment because coming off of the 25th anniversary of Soul Food where y'all had already predicted a lot of this stuff that was going on at that time. You see what I'm saying? What was it like when you realized that the music that y'all had made 25 years ago was spot on to the day that we were living in right then at that time? Well, the good thing about that, man, is that organized noise, bro. I mean, mm -hmm. they really, they produced us. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, if it was something that, um, because they are our peers. We, they're the same age. Yeah. If it was something, they was like, no, nah, Joe, no, nah, you can't, no, nah, you can't write that. You can't put that yeah. down. You know what I mean? So, uh, you wouldn't have had a cell therapy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't have had a soul food. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is, is that, man, not it's been out here. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's been all on the internet. We just had a chance in 1990 to put our eyes and ears on some stuff that was going on that nobody knew about, especially in the South. You know what exactly. I mean? Nobody knew about the New World Order, or they wasn't rapping about the New World Order in the South. Yeah. They attribute all that stuff to, you know, people up North having that type of knowledge. You know what I yeah. mean? But some Southerners down here in Atlanta, man, having that type of knowledge about what's going on, man, it really kind of um, raised a lot of folk eyebrows. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, these some different... These some different cats, man. You know yeah. what I mean? Cause we could have rapped, we could have rapped about anything, bro. I yeah. mean, we from the from the hood, we from the streets. Yeah. We could have did all that, man. But it wouldn't have made an impact today. Yeah, you know what I mean? Wouldn't have made an impact today. So the youth, they going back like Travis Scott. He went back, pulled up that um, cell therapy. That's right. So he did not only listen to the beat; he had to be listening to the, mir Come the lyrics on. too. Then you got my little partner, little Bam. You yeah, know what I mean? He went crazy, he went on, crazy it too. on it too, man. You know what I mean? So that's love, man. Yep. I mean, twenty five years later, you got a new generation going back to that music exactly. and giving credit to uh, organized noise too because they sampling their music. You yep. see what I'm saying? So uh, who would have known, man? We was just represent. Getting back in there with organized noise as well, though, man. Mm -hmm. Because see, it was like y'all didn't play. With this survival kit, either it was like, okay, man, it's time to go ahead and hook up the Transformers again, mm -hmm. get everybody back together. Everybody was bringing their A game. Now, Joe, I ain't gonna lie, you were singing them hooks like your life depended on it, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. that pray for the sheep. You meant that, Joe. Now I'm gonna, I'm, look, I gotta give credit to credit where credit due. Come on with it. The pray for the sheep hook uh -huh. was wrote by my partner, Renegade. Okay then. Up in Stankonia. Yeah. So I'm tell you a story about that. So I had Come the hook. I it. had the hook wrote down, uh -huh. and it was playing the stank on you. Yeah. So, uh, big boy tells Gil, say Gil, come here and check this out. I'm like, damn, what y'all doing? <laughs> I ain't no big. All right. So I walked over there too, and then I heard the hook change. I was like, hmm. <laughs> I said, uh, you might want to take that word out right there. Yeah. And put something else in there, man. I gotta give credit, man. That man, that boy Renegade did his thing, bro. Facts, facts. Did his thing, bro. So, yeah. So, being in there delivering that stuff again, though, Joe, what was that like for you, man? Because I felt like you was in real form this whole project, though. Man, I just took a different approach to it, man. I took an approach to it like, man, tomorrow wasn't even promised. Mm. That's the honest truth how I, um, how I attack that survival kit. Because mm -hmm. I was coming off of my solo album, Facts. Echoes of a Legend. That's right. So I was still coming with other material. So I'm still writing. So I, I got the I got the swag. I got the vibe. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm going. And now, Organized Noise and Goody Mall want to lock in. Man, I'm going to give y'all everything I got, man. Yeah. If you don't like it, man, let me know. I'll change it. But, man, I, I want to give it all I got, man. Like, tomorrow ain't promised, and I need these folk to feel it. Exactly. To feel this goody mob, man. You know what I mean? In this 21st century, 2021, you got to feel it, man. How did you feel when y'all <clears throat> dropped that thing independently and it went crazy? Man, the independent games, I think that we was last in the independent game. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Because we signed major with LaFace and Arista. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So we never got a chance to even – Taste the independent mm, life, you know what I mean? Yeah. But doing hindsight 2020, thinking about Master P, when we used to go and tour, walking in them record stores and seeing a big old, big old model of Master P, all his music, all his records, you can't, you can't miss it. Yeah. You can't miss it. Yeah. So for us to have our own, man, our independent album, man, we owning the rights to it, bro. Hey man, I found to go eat good, bro. You Come know what on. I mean? Off of this one, man. 
You know what I'm saying? Our young is gonna eat good, man. Which hey. they're supposed to, man. We work hard, bro. You damn right. Work hard, man. Putting our life in this music. I'm talking about time away from the fam, man. We deserve it, bro. You damn right. We deserve it, man. So now, uh, speaking of Master P, I seen you in the studio jamming with Beats by the Pound the other day too, mm. man. I mean, what was going on with that, Joe? Man, KL and Moby Dick, man. Yes, sir. Good friends, man. Come on. Great friends, man. I mean, we first went to New Orleans, man. We met them guys. Yeah. Them guys, and they had it going on, man. I mean, <laughs> man, I remember in, in, in the studio freestyling with Mystical, man. Yeah. Just really making friends with those brothers, man. And um, they just happened to be in town. They hit me up. Matter, now, matter of fact, yeah, they was in town, and we just happened to be rehearsing for a show that we was doing. Yeah. And, um... KL and, and Moby Dick, they was in Stank on there doing getting some um, some studio time. Yeah. So after we rehearsed, man, we walked over to the studio, man. I was like, damn. <laughs> I was like, man, I got a hook for that, man. Yeah. I got a hook for it. So man, he's like, oh man. So it ain't nothing but love, man. They they know how it is, man. Coming out of the nineties with the nineties music and still exactly. still being able to to eat now in the twenty first century, man. Using your craft to do it, man. You know what I'm saying? They they know how it is, man. Because with this music, man, this once you in it, man, it's like, man, either you gon' either you gon' you gon' sink, or you gon' goddamn float. Come on you know now, what I, mean? I'm you know with what I mean? you. So hey, man, it, it, it ain't easy, bro. You know what I'm saying? So we gotta uplift each other in this music, bro. Cause rock and roll, they do it all the time. Facts. Do it all the time. Bro. Facts. I mean, who won't smoke? Mm. No see God. Mm. I mean, once again, you in this thing going off. But y'all was able to pull Andre three racks out of nowhere. How the hell did y'all get this man to come out of hiding in the middle of a pandemic? Man, uh, now I, I got to give that credit to Big Gip. Okay. Because Big Gip stayed on him. But the thing <laughs> about Dre is that I realized, I was like, man, little bro love us, man. Of course. He love us, man, because he don't he don't just, just do anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we sent him one song. Mm -hmm. He was like, ah... It's all right. You gotta love him because he's gonna keep it real, man. He's gonna keep it real. He's like, uh, send me something else, man. So I think his I think his verse was the last, the last icing on the cake because we was waiting on, we was waiting on his verse. Yeah. We wasn't gonna, we weren't gonna um seal that thing up without him, man. Exactly. You know I mean? So man, just to have him come out and do his thing, man. Big boy come out and do his thing, man. Come it, on. It, like Big Gibbs said, man, we started with organized noise. And if it's gonna be an end, we gonna we gonna end it with them. You know what I mean? The way that album sound though, Joe, it sound like we need about four, five more of them types though, bro. Hey, I mean, what working. you talking about? We about to do another one. Exactly. We're gonna, gonna do another one. What was it like getting back in there with organized noise though, man? And them guys and saying, "Hey, man, you know what sound we go crazy on?" And then they come in there and go crazy because. Like I say, that Pray for the Sheep, I love that one right mm, there, man. too. I mean, Big got on that thing and went crazy as well. So, I mean, just that vibe of getting the family, the whole team back together, man. What was that like, that synergy? Man, it felt good, man. It felt like, you know how you go away to camp? Yeah. With your homeboys, you yeah. mean your partner's man. Yeah. <laughs> no mama, no daddy, man. Y'all can stay up late. Y'all yeah. can do whatever y'all want to do. It felt like being back at the dungeon, man. Yeah. Doing that Southern Playlist at Cadillac Music album, man. Like, all of us was together, man. Yeah. Sleeping on the floor. Yeah. I mean, eating together, you know what I mean? I mean, eating out of the same plate, you know yeah. what I mean? Sharing the same thoughts, you know what I mean? Yeah. But the good part about this one is, is Organized Noise wanted to do it, too. Mm. Good and Mall, we wanted to do it, man. Mm. We wanted to do it, you know what I'm saying? That, yeah. That's the... That's the kicker right there, man. If you don't love what you're doing, yeah. you're not gonna want to do it. You yeah. know what I mean? So, the fans, bro. Yeah, we couldn't get away from it, man. Every time coming out the house, man. <laughs> when I, I like your solo album, Cujo, but when <laughs> are y'all gonna do another Goody Mob album, man? So that's, I mean, that's it. That was every day coming out my house, man. So. We fulfilled the wishes of our fans, man. How did it feel, though, being able to fulfill those wishes of the fans? But then y'all came back with a hard-ass project, though. You didn't just poop something out and say, I right, hear y'all go get out my damn back. Y'all came back with a masterpiece in this thing. You see what I'm saying, Joe? Man, that was our, what, sixth album? Seventh album? Mm -hmm. Something like that. But, like I said, the thing about it is, man, 
we professionals at this thing. Yeah. And we got people that um that look up to us, man. Mm-hmm. We got young, another generation looking up to us, man. So it's like we had to put our all into it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I tell a I tell a young a young brother or a young sister that's doing music right now, man. If you can't put your all into it, man, don't don't even mess yourself up like that. Exactly. You know what I mean? So we we finally we finally reached that legendary status, man. Twenty five years for Soul Food, twenty three years for Still Standing this year. I don't want to hear nothing about finally it reached the legendary. <laughs> when y'all jumped off the porch, y'all jumped off the porch as grown ass legends, okay? And that's just what that is. 